Hello, this is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to talk about one more ancient numeration system. This is for the Greeks, so the ancient Greek numeration system. Now, the earliest numeration system of Greece was not really standardized. Each of the mostly independent city-states had their own system, or at least variations of the systems. Like the later Romans, they used their letters to represent numbers. Numbered names, in general, preceded numericals, uh, numerals historically. So, in other words, people had a word for a number before they had a symbol for that number. Okay. And initially, one of the things that some of the Greeks did is use the first letter of the corresponding number as a shorthand or, or for that number word. For example, if we were doing this in modern English, we might use a T to abbreviate 2, F to abbreviate 4, and N to abbreviate 9, and so forth. Notice that we do something similar to that uh, in, our, in our schedules uh, on our computer for our class schedules. We have M for Monday, T for Tuesday, etc. But eventually, uh, the following system that I'm going to show you kind of became standard in the, uh, in the Greek culture. Uh, they did use their alphabet. Like the 26 letters of our current Latin Roman alphabet, they have, they have an alphabetical order, and they have both lower and uppercase versions. So here is a, uh, a thing here that shows you both the upper and lowercase versions in alphabetical order they are. Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Zeta, Eta, Theta, Oda, Kappa, Lambda, Mu, Nu, Xi, Omicron, Pi, Rho, Sigma, Tau, Upsilon, Phi, Chi, Psi, Omega. And, uh, well, that's the way at least I pronounce them, at least sometimes. Um, and there are sometimes other pronunciations. For example, it's pretty common to see this letter here uh, pronounced both as Phi or as Phi. Uh, my Greek friend told, would pronounce this phi, and he also used a long e for, for these two letters here. Uh, he pronounced this one uh, beta and this one zeta instead of beta and zeta. So there may be some variation in the way you hear those pronounced. Probably if you really want an accurate pronunciation, you need to get somebody from Greece instead of somebody from Arkansas pronouncing these. Um the Greeks had three other letters that were actually older letters that have come fallen out of use, uh, but they fit in here alphabetically some way. Uh, Di Gamma is here, Kappa is here, and San is here. And uh, if you put those together, those 27 numerals, uh, 27 letters serve double duty as numerals as well as, as letters. So here is all 27 in alphabetical order. And if you see uh, some of the extra ones uh, that we don't use anymore in Greek, uh, or the, the sixth one there, and uh, we'll see where the other ones. Here's one here and down here as well. Okay, so they had a number system based on this 27-letter extended Greek alphabet in alphabetical order. So the first nine letters, uh, and it could be upper or lower case, represent the, uh, the first nine natural numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, as you see in this table here. The next nine are represent, in alphabetical order, the first nine multiplied by 10. So, so iota is 10, kappa is 20, and so forth. And so these represent 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90. And then the next nine represent 100 times the original. And so in alphabetical order, those are uh, rho is 100, sigma is 200, and so forth. So 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900. And so with uh, at most three symbols, you can represent every numeral, every natural number with a numeral that only has uh, one, two, or three symbols, every one going from 1 to 999. So, for example, and then they were basically just written additively with a bigger place value or bigger value symbol. 
First, it's not really a place value system, although you do see you have uh, groupings in tens, so notice that. And um, for example, 659 would be six hundreds, which would be a, a, a chi. And then five uh, tens or 50, that would be a nu. And then uh, seven, no, eight singles, eight units, that would be an eta there. So chi, nu, eta would be how they would represent 658. Now, of course, you probably see an obvious drawback here, um, the same drawback that we have in some of the other systems where you have a finite number of, system of symbols, but you don't have a place value system is at some point you run out of ways to write the numbers nicely, uh, in this case at 999. And one of the ways that they uh, addressed that was by adding either a, well, at first they did it as a superscript, then as a subscript, put an iota there as a, a super subscript, and it basically multiplies by a thousand. So if you have, an uh, say, say a gamma, which would, the third letter it represents a three, and you have the iota next to it there. Now it's not three, but 3,000. And so in that way, they could represent um, numbers a lot bigger. Uh, there's some other ways that they tried to extend it that were added later on, and some, some different mathematicians tried different systems. Uh, Archimedes had a system, for example, and so forth. Uh, if you look at this, um, this link to... Uh, the Mac Tudor History of Mathematics article, which is where I lifted these uh, tables, it gives a little more in depth and shows you how some of these things work. So in the next video, we're on to our modern system, which is called the Hindu Arabic numerals.